You have to do more doing than you do thinking. I think that a lot of times we convince ourselves that the thinking and the planning and the writing and the researching and looking at other people and all that stuff is a part of the process. Yesterday. Oh no, I think we could do it. I literally have on one sock. You know what? I'm gonna dress up for you guys. Hold on. It's 2024 It's literally raining right now. I have to sit on a blanket, but you know what? I told myself I was gonna film this right now So that's what we're doing and that is the theme. That is the mother freaking theme for 2024 is just do it literally so anyway yeah hi we are on actually the seventh day of january 2024 and that reason is because i like to take some days when new things begin to process them okay so for me 2023 was the year of purging i think i just like really faced myself i faced my limiting beliefs I confronted my fears and I had a lot of breakthroughs through that and in between all of that was lots and lots of soul numbing healing. 2023's theme was heal so you can deal and I'm going to talk about how that came to be in a second. I think I'm just going to refer to 2023 as this year. It was my least traveled year since like 2017, but that was completely intentional. So at the end of 2022, when I finally left Turkey, I made a goal to commit to slow travel. I just desperately needed to slow down. I think at the end of 2022, I was finally coming to terms with my lifestyle. Like, look, this is your life. This is what you want to do. Like, stop fighting it, pretty much. You know, I knew that I wanted to travel and switch my locations and see so many places, but it needed to change. I couldn't keep bouncing like a freaking rabbit so quickly. So I committed to slow travel. I wanted to do no less than like two to three months. I actually achieved that. That's really cool to say. I spent a third of the year in Thailand on two separate visits. The first visit was with my mom. She got to experience it for the first time because it was also my first time in Asia. At the start of the year in Houston with my sister. Then I spent a couple months between a few visits, you know, in Chicago, going back for family events. I got to be present for my grandma's 101st birthday. So that's epic. I spent the last three months in France mainly, but I also did like a trip to Italy. End of the year in Italy. I gained the courage to tell myself I don't want this and I do want this this year without feeling guilty. I learned to trust my own decisions and not be so lenient on my confidants because I've been a person that couldn't fully make a decision unless you know I kind of had opinions of others and so that's something that I really worked on this year was to be confident in my own decision and just go with it. Even if I feel like it was a mistake or not, I just learned to lean on myself. I learned to speak up and say what's on my mind. Also working with doing that gracefully and not so aggressively because if it's not your choice, you're giving the choice to someone else. Overall, as I leave this year, I felt like my quiet healing is paying off. It has paid off really. So when I look back at the start of the year, it was kind of a slow build. I started going out in sweats more and tennis shoes and kind of just showing up as I'm feeling. I just, I don't know, I just got tired of faking it. I just started to notice toxic positivity, forcing a smile when I didn't really feel like smiling. I wasn't really that happy. I've always been known as bubbly Brit. I've always lived by this mindset that we always hear, fake it till you make it you show up as who you want to be you know i think it's a good mindset to follow for a lot of things in life i'm like you know what i think i'm just tired of faking it till i make it and guess what i haven't really made it so it's not really working how i hoped it would i think that especially in this like era of instagram and social media that we're taught fake it till you make it like pretend you're happy you know smile and then you'll trick your mind into being happy or post all of the great things about your week, put them in a reel and it'll make you look or make you feel like your life is great. And then that'll manifest. Yeah, manifest, that's a big 
keyword uh that'll manifest your life being great another way is what about if you just take life as it is how about that how about just chill out stop trying to manifest something and just live and just like rediscover what life is which is it's not a highlight reel and it's not so bad you don't have to be happy all the time i learned this phrase from like 600 pound life it's called smiling depressive i'll just let that sink in i can't i just can't do it anymore so that's when i came up with the concept of heal so i can deal leaning completely within and facing however i'm feeling instead of just picking myself up i allow myself to fail i allow myself to leave the house unprimped be sad i learned this year that that's okay to be that's okay to show up as is how you're feeling it's okay to show up i'm still following those or that act of self-love and just gently introducing new goals without pressuring myself and kind of saying you need to be doing this and you know trying to accomplish goals that way i'm just gently when i feel okay saying okay you can do this this day and you can do these things because you want to reach your greatest potential in this lifetime and you can more of that energy fake it till you make it never really worked for me pretty much i think i was just lying to myself for a really long time okay so my first big lesson on the heels of the heel so you can deal testimony is to open up what i learned from not being 100 percent upfront with how i was feeling is that people will think that you're okay which whoever has experienced this knows how very frustrating it could be but what happens is that you'll just end up struggling alone so finding humility and learning to be vulnerable was a big focus for me but with that being said who you really are i feel like will always be seen by real people anyway i really believe that people can for instance see it through your eyes or when you smile from the heart people notice no matter how like cool you try to act i've had so many people actually tell me within the first like 15 minutes of meeting me and they would say to me like you're a good person and i'm like how how do you know that you don't know that we've known each other for 15 minutes they're just like i can just tell so i feel like when you try to like act cool or try to play people you're just gonna end up playing yourself and you're not gonna fool anybody okay so number two is let people in finding community from a serial soloist support is important community is important friendships are important and it took me 30 years to learn that I wouldn't change my loner past because I feel like it helped me develop a relationship within myself where now I know what type of people I want to let in and I know when I find them how important it is to cherish good relationships. Finding a solid community, especially for me with my lifestyle, it's not easy, but it's one of my biggest goals for 2024. Okay, had to move because it was raining outside. So finding community is important, but with that being said, my next lesson, was learn to accept my life until I find the right people or learn to give myself the fulfillment that I seek in others. So on my 31st birthday this year, 2023, I sat alone in my little cabin in the woods in Pai, Thailand, and it just hit me that there's no group of friends or perfect community waiting to appear. It's going to take time to build that and not trying to sound too morbid, but considering the fact that this birthday could very well be my last, you never know. I needed to face facts. Either I continue to wait for it or I settle in. Did I want to be alone that day? Absolutely not. Anybody who knows me knows that I hold birthdays very dear. And I always say, I think it's the one day of the year where you can feel special and acknowledged by the people closest to you in your life. Could I have grabbed some randos in town and mind effed myself into thinking that they actually cared that it was my birthday? Yeah, sure, I'm sure actually I have done that in the past. But because I've done that in the past, I know that that idea would have been just as bad or worse than just spending the day enjoying my own company. So some time in the morning when I was just kind of sulking a little bit or found myself about to sulk, I decided to give myself a real birthday. So I wanted to do all of my favorite things. I went to the party store in town and I got me some helium balloons, which became a tradition of mine since Turkey. And then I went back to the cabin and I did my makeup while listening to my favorite music. Then I found the one nice dress that I packed. I 
got dressed and then I went around town to all of my favorite spots that I had just been eyeing and I decided to do like a photo shoot for myself. I ended the night watching the sunset with Coldplay playing, getting drunk off soju wine and just reflecting and it was a beautiful night. I sat in the grass and just as the last bit of color faded from the sky, I decided I would no longer wait. You would have told me at my 31st birthday I'd be sitting in the grass with an everlasting sunset in northern Thailand in a dress, very, very sweaty, drinking soju. I would have laughed and I'm laughing now. So here we are. So I'm still hoping for one day that picture perfect community but I will never again underestimate my capability to be everything that I need. Because if I happen to die tomorrow, I want it to be known that I chose to give myself a full life. If you're continuously attracting the wrong people in your life, it's not them, it's you. Whew, when I learned this, y'all. People pleasing can have you out here trying to fit into places that you don't even want to be and be liked by people that you don't even like. For the longest time, I felt like I kept just getting sucky people in my life. And I would think things like I was really misunderstood and like I'm cursed or something. How do I keep finding these people that are so wrong for me? This year, I got a wake up call. It said, time to stop making excuses and start looking within and start making some changes because there's only so long that you can kind of blame everyone else and or everything else and blame special forces in the world before you just have to kind of like look inside and see what can i do like not that necessarily it's me but what changes can i make because i can't just sit, sit around and make excuses speak things not just write them aka Tell everyone what you want. So I finally understand speaking things into existence. I've always been a huge writer, a huge advocate for writing things down. Writing my own goals and desires over the years have helped me understand what I want. But people make things happen, other people. <laughs> and you have to tell them what you want. They won't know if it's just written down for you. You want someone to be your friend, tell them. You want to be in a relationship, be vulnerable and tell them. You want to be a famous writer, tell people. And also tell people by putting your work out there, putting out your art and not feeling ashamed. I've been spilling the beans to everybody that I meet and I don't care anymore. My main mission is to speak everything that I want into existence. I don't care to try to play cool about it or to keep it to myself. No, you're gonna know what I want. <laughs> I'll take any advice, any relationships, I'll take any um, hookups that you have, anyone that you know that can help me, I'll take it, great. But that brings me to my next point, be cringe. In 2024, we're not worried about how we look to people. Be corny, be sappy, be loud, be silly, be animated be unique, be you. I read this quote somewhere, but it's so true. At the end of your life, well, I'm not the end of my life, but <laughs> I get it now. At the end of your life, you will regret changing parts of yourself for other people than just having the confidence to be yourself. And I feel like I had an awakening this year that the people who won't accept you for being you, they're not on your team and they will hold you back. Okay, stop trying to protect myself or stop trying to be so controlling. I think a lot of us try to protect ourselves from failure or from looking a certain way. I think that we try to watch a lot and see what mistakes other people are going to make so that we don't make them ourselves. Or we watch and see if something's worth it before we dive in. What I learned is it's way more of a risk to do that, sit, wait, and watch than to actually just dive in and make the mistakes and figure it out. Another one of my favorite lessons this year was not to choose hard things because you can. I don't have anything to prove to anyone. The last country that I was in, I spent way too long there in terms of my mental health, I overstayed. It was kind of a double-edged sword. So from a traveler's perspective, I am happy that I stayed longer than the average tourist. I got to give somewhere a chance that's so regularly skimmed in a week or two by 
most people and then judged. And I gave it longer time to really get to know things that many people don't get the opportunity to know in that short amount of time. And I got to know the country deeper. So I'm very thankful for that. And I will never regret that part. But from a personal perspective, I failed myself. I was uncomfortable most of my time there. And the thing is, I forced myself to endure it. I thought it would make me stronger, something that I realized is such a toxic mindset. And what it did was it made me uncomfortable. Let's just be real. I wasn't real with myself back then, but I was uncomfortable. That experience left me resentful, guarded, and I'm trying not to sound too dramatic, but stripped of the most liberated and cherished parts of myself. And it became very clear this year that I was doing that with a lot of things in my life. I think it was a time for me called, I'm tough, I can take it. I've always been a girl that loves to challenge myself, but I just don't think that it was coming from a place of self-love. I think it was coming from a place of trying to prove something to myself, which I don't think is a place of love. I think it's not a hate. I don't think it's a place of love. But now I'm fully understanding that Strength doesn't come from fighting or forcing things. It doesn't come from choosing hard things just to prove that you can get through them. True strength is speaking love and gentleness and kindness into yourself and saying, I can do that, but that doesn't make me comfortable. I don't want to do that. If that looks like a failure, then so be it because choosing me is a win these days. Okay, so the final lesson, number 11, which I also kind of feel like will be the mantra for this year in 2024. It's to jump, for lack of a better word, <laughs> which means to get out of my own head and just do it, do the things. Don't fall into the trap of trying to test the water before you dive in. Y'all like that? <laughs> I learned that you have to do more doing than you do thinking. Because whatever you convince yourself that you have planned or on the way in the making, it's only existing inside of your mind, which means it doesn't truly exist. It's only in here until you actually take the step to do the thing. It can be scary because I think that a lot of times we convince ourselves that the thinking and the planning and the writing and the researching and looking at other people and all that stuff is a part of the process. Don't fall for it because your mind can really convince yourself that you're on the way to doing the things and you wake up one day and you realize that nothing really has happened. You filled notebooks, but you've never even taken the first step and you have no experience now you didn't learn from your mistakes. It's a thing called productive procrastination where we do a lot of insignificant things before the thing that's actually going to make change in our life. Those satisfy our need for accomplishment. One of those things that I've been wanting to do was post more on my YouTube channel. I wanna grow on YouTube and I wanna become successful on YouTube. I had to just realize one day that I have to just put out the video. I have to just make the video. I have to sit down, film it however I can. My background's not perfect. My audio may not be perfect. My lighting may not be perfect, but you know what, I'm learning and each and every video that I edit, I, I tweak it and I'm getting feedback from you guys and I'm getting support and I'm on my way. So at least I'm doing the thing. All right, so 2024, welcome to 2024. Let's talk about, oh, was that a nip slip? That's not the way I wanna start 2024. I have to say, I'm just not into the whole mantra game this year. I just don't wanna talk about it. I guess that's the mantra then. I don't wanna talk about it, I wanna be about it. Pretty much my vibe this year is to put my head down and handle my business. So I actually came up with these kind of cool guidelines to kickstart the year in place of a mantra, I guess. The first thing is areas of my life that I feel like need improvement. Minimalism versus vanity. So for the longest time, I feel like I've battled with both. I love the freeing experience of backpacking and 
carrying with me just all the things that I need to live on my back. That's so liberating. If you haven't tried that, I highly recommend it. Or the way that I travel now with just suitcase, a tote bag, and a backpack. I love that for me. It's so good to know that you don't need all these unnecessary things. And a lot of these things in life are excess. But on the other side, I love fashion, I do. I feel like I'm a creative person and I have an eye for style and beauty and it makes me feel good. I love having clothes that make me feel good and cute clothes. I love my heels. Since I've been traveling, I've felt guilty about that. I can only carry like a few pairs of shoes and very little things. So it's not practical for my lifestyle. I wanna find a sweet spot and not feel guilty for desiring either because I think both of them add to who I am as a person. I wanna chase every single dream of mine and do everything without overthinking. Like the amount of overthinking that I do is disgusting, it's toxic, <laughs> it's time consuming. Even editing these YouTube videos, it takes me, I feel like, way longer than it should because most of my time is spent overthinking it and picking myself apart. But this year, I really just, I wanna improve that health and wellness. I wanna start being uber conscious of the things that I put in my body that don't make me feel good. Sugar, my alcoholic intake, dairy, and not eliminating necessarily, but really taking it seriously. Coffee, skipping workouts, self-deprecation. <laughs> All of those things that don't make me feel good. More yoga and meditation, even if it's 10 minutes. As I discussed earlier, my goals for the new year is finding community. My strategy for doing that is showing up here 100% and sharing everything that I'm passionate about in hopes of attracting like-minded people and finding my community. So also this year, this actually was like a last minute addition on this little list here because I just had an experience the other night and it just, a realization and I think I've been thinking about this for quite a while now but I'm finally acknowledging it I would like to challenge myself to have one drink I'm not a big drinker number one I can have one drink and be okay when I think about why I crave a drink it's usually something to do with taking my mind off of certain things or it's about being social usually one drink just relaxes me that typically does the job but I think about why I go after the second and third drink most of the time the second and third drink leaves me regretting it then you know everybody knows when you pass like the second the third drink the fourth drink you know it starts to taste like water you realize you're just like more drinks than you initially planned on having down I feel like it's just purely psychological and so now I want to take it seriously and I want to challenge myself to just have one drink and see how I feel and like really kind of analyze why I'm reaching after the second and third drink. If I'm getting to the point of dehydration where I'm having hangovers, I think that's an issue. I plan on being more aware of what I'm consuming just like all around. So specifically reality TV, gossip, gossip YouTubers, gossip sites, social media, all that stuff has got to go. I've realized that it's affecting my empathy and it's just kind of filling my thoughts always with toxicity. So dating apps, I'm weaning myself off of it. I can talk about that in a different video, but that is a back and forth thing with me because again, I battle with practicality and convenience with me being a solo traveler and always traveling to new places. How else do people network and connect these days? And it's just, I don't believe them anymore. I think they're purely toxic. I think they don't work. And I think that they're just trying to take money from you. Anyway, like, like I said, talk about that later. <laughs> I plan to create like nobody's business. So you'll see me a lot on YouTube. Um, I wanna develop a body of work that I'm proud of. And I predict a lot of my old passions to resurface, like yoga. Um, I have some yoga, goal, yoga goals and dance performance. A lot of you don't know, but I used to be a part of a burlesque troupe. I love stage performance. I'm a Leo. Um, maybe even acting this year. That'll be something new. But yeah, I want to just really thrive in all things creative. And lastly, I predict myself, I guess this can go along with the things that I'm consuming. Music. I'm a big music girl and I have my taste is a full range of music, but I'm starting to look at certain music that I listen to sideways. It's starting to really mesh into that whole 
just negative toxic messaging stuff that's poisoning my brain and my thoughts you know i had this revelation when i was just kind of letting my playlist go and india Ari came on and i'm like oh throwbacks and i'm just like singing all the words and for once i was like wait a minute i'm like oh she's speaking facts and the songs are about healing it's about being comfortable with yourself it's about living a beautiful life and what you can do to live a beautiful like you know that's how music should be that's how it used to be music should relay a message of positivity at least that's what i believe and i think that of course this generation we got so caught up in the beat i want to listen to more good soul music like india Ari, jill scott lauren hill people who actually are talking about things and make you feel, make your soul feel good. Cleo Soul is a new artist that I'm on, and she, you know, that song, Know That You Are Loved, it's so cute. Just lo fi music makes me feel good. Just those type of beats, maybe some smooth jazz. I'm taking it back because this generation is not it. So anyway, yeah, that's it. That's it for my look back on 2023 and my welcome into 2024. And I just overall plan to have a positive year. I want to turn a new leaf, focus much more on peace and productivity and from what I can see floating around, many of you are feeling the same. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you again in my next video.